Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome at the office boat of HR Builders for our workshop on the six basic success factors in project management. I'm a little stressed, I must say, uh, because it's the first time we will have this workshop live streamed. Um, so I'm curious how uh, all the technology will work with us uh, this evening. I'm Sandra Peters, I'm country manager for HR Builders in Belgium. Um, and uh, this is my uh, work spot here on our office boat in Ghent. But before we start, uh, let me introduce our audience. At the moment, not everybody is there yet because, um, well, traffic jams are part of living in Belgium. And uh, so people are stuck in traffic even at uh, this late hour. Um, so let's start uh, introducing the people that are here already. Shall we start with the, the ladies? Hello, I am Joke. And maybe you can uh, tell um, something about yourself and maybe the experience that you have in project management, if you have any. Uh, my experience is rather uh, little um, or little projects, not big ones. Uh, sometimes I do some projects, yes. And you're working as an HR interim manager? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Hello, good evening. My name is Veronique. Uh, I've been working, I am working as interim manager for about eight years now. I have a practical experience of project management without really having any theory. So I'm very interested in this workshop. Okay. Hi, and my name is Anne. I'm currently working as a project manager since about three years. Um, as same as for yoga, I have not so much experience in project management, mostly small ones and not really the big projects. So I'm curious. Okay, great. <laughs> Hi, good evening. My name is Els. I'm an experienced uh, project leader in ICT and in HR and my specialty is Agile Project Management. Well, great. Maybe you can share the whole with me. I don't know anything about Agile. I, don't, I know about Scrum meetings. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very curious if you well, have I'm any. I'm trying to bring Agile project management out of IT to yeah. HR. To HR. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really great. So if you have other insights than what I share, because I'm still old school project management, <laughs> and this is new school project management, please do or share them. That would be okay. Great. Thanks. Good evening, hello, I'm uh, Cindy. Uh, I am also an HR interim man uh, manager. I have little experience as the other colleagues uh, in project management. Um, often I've been working in uh, very ad hoc organized companies that decide today on what they would like to do tomorrow. Okay, great. And it's <laughs> often the way we do projects. Okay. So I would like to know how to get an organization more into a project. Hmm, then maybe our two hours this evening will not suffice, <laughs> but maybe afterwards when, we have, or when we're having a glass of kava, we can have a chat. I would love to. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. Good evening, I am Mark. Uh, I am just coming out of a traffic jam, yes. coming <laughs> from Antwerp, and it was terrible. We had two accidents on the, on the, on the road, so I'm sorry I'm excusing myself here for being late. I have already some uh, experience with uh, project management. I did already several as an interim manager. I'm here to just refresh my uh, my knowledge in that domain. Great. And as an HR director, you're probably very often a sponsor of HR projects. Yeah, absolutely. So that that can be very interesting to have your insights. As, uh, I'm willing to share that. With yes. You. Thanks. <laughs> well, can... Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> after you have me having your dinner. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm working as a business partner for HR Builders and I don't have so many experience with um, project management, so I'm very curious. <laughs> Too, okay. Thanks. Catherine? Hello, I'm Catherine. I'm the captain of this uh, office boat. <laughs> Um, and I'm also the reason why we are streaming, so <laughs> I think Belgium and Ghent, that's too small, I mean, we have to conquer the world, and I mean, we have to share, and people who cannot be here and cannot attend, it's the new world, it's a digital and technology, so we should embrace that, and uh, I think Sandra has a lot of uh, interesting experience to share, we also try to make it very interactive, so I really hope that we will see a lot of interaction uh, this evening. 
and welcome to all the people who are already online. I will be the spokesperson for you. Um, I'm following. I'm following it through your account. So it's Katrin who is uh, typing. It's Sandra who is speaking. I will try to solve it, but we have already um, 21 people now watching oh, us. So oh, welcome nice. everybody, even person from Hungary. So shout out oh, to wow. Hungary from Lyon. Um, and we also have one of our colleagues already following, so yeah, yeah. Whenever there are questions, I will uh, speak, so do not hesitate, online crowd, to um, tweet or uh, interact via uh, Mirkas. So they can interact uh, by, by sending a tweet with yeah. our hashtag? No, they can, uh, either they can send a tweet or they can, uh, on the Mirkat live stream, just interact. There's a little box that opens. And you can also send us a heart if you like the workshop. <laughs> uh, so you can do that. You can also restream it if you like it. But you can um, immediately comment in a little box there. Okay, great. So Katrin, spokesperson for the online community. <laughs> Hi, I'm Isabel, Isabel Deke, and I've been working as HR manager or HR director in uh, multinationals where project management was part of the day-to-day -day business. Uh, and I'm launching now my second uh, career as a, as a freelancer, as we speak. Okay, so you've been a sponsor for several HR projects as well? Yes, yes. Uh, part of project teams, being project sponsor, uh, several roles in, in project management. Oh, great. Yeah. So I, I hope that you, you'll be willing to share your experience, Thank your you. insights. Great, thanks. Hello, I'm uh, Koen van der Schuren, uh, working for almost four years as an HR freelancer and interim manager. I have uh, several experiences uh, in, small experiences in project man management, but two less for myself, I think, and uh, I can learn more about it. And I hope that we have uh, this evening. Okay, great. And I'm Ruby, yes, of course. <laughs> Our technology manager. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, I will be I will be will be responsible for the streaming of this uh, tonight show. <laughs> so um, I don't have experience in uh, HR project management, but I'm certainly that uh, Sandra will do it very well. And, and who are you? I am Robbie DeCalvi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a uh, business partner at uh, HR Builders. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I'll give you the yeah. phone back. Okay. <laughs> Well, I thought it was really funny when we introduced each other that everybody was watching the screens. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I suggest that we have a very interactive workshop. Okay, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, strange that we have online uh, virtual people uh, joining, but uh, I would like to uh, interact with the live people uh, as well. So um, please feel free to um, share your insights and to talk to each other. <laughs> no worries about that. Now, um, I have uh, made a short presentation uh, on the project management. It's, uh, we only have about two hours uh, this evening um, on project management. And uh, all of a sudden, there's no uh, screen anymore. Okay, um, thank you, Robin. Um, uh, I, have, I've, I have about 15 years of experience in uh, project management, specifically in HR. Um, and I would like to share with you some, uh, some of my insights on what makes uh, a project successful or not. And uh, because we have a lot of uh, people in high level functions in multinational uh, or big uh, corporations, I thought it would be interesting to focus on the interaction between the project manager and the project sponsor. Because if you have uh, a good uh, collaboration between the project manager and the project sponsor, uh, this is already one of the most important success factors in the project uh, to me. And um, so I will focus on the project preparation and on the, the interaction before starting the project with your project sponsor so that you get the aim right, the target right, where do you have to go to before planning. And because a lot of pro project managers, when they prepare their project, uh, I don't know about other cultures, but typically in Belgium, when we start a project, and uh, very often it happens like this, um, you walk around to the coffee bar, for example, or uh, in your company, and your uh, HR director passes you, or the HR director passes a beer, uh, and uh, they have a discussion like this. Hi, don't, don't you think we should do something about 
psychosocial risks at work. I don't know, something that's a hot topic in HR. Yeah, that would be great. Well, can you work something out? Yeah, great. Or um, we should go to another HRIS platform. Yeah, can you make an analysis? Yeah, I'll do that. And then they start. And next time they meet, you meet each other, uh, the, HR, the, the sponsor says, when will it be ready, your project? And then you have to set a date. What will the budget be? And you don't have a clear idea of what needs to be done in the project. Eh? But very often in, in Belgium, we have the culture of pulling up our sleeves and uh, <laughs> taking on our boots and just starting away. But it doesn't make sense because what, what is the target? What's the objective of your project? And if you get that clear and you get consensus on that, you can be a successful project manager. Yeah? So that's why I focused on the relation between project sponsors and project managers. Um, and and I, I found six success factors. There, there are a lot of more, uh, a lot more success factors um, that I would like to share with you. But before doing that, I would like to ask you a question. Um, I've heard of several people saying that they are working on projects uh, now. Um, is it clear to you what you should do, by when, and what budget do you have? What is in scope? Is it clear when you when you're working on your project? If you think of your project now, depends on the project, I guess. Mm. Do you have a project in mind? Yes, time registration. Then you work with another company and. You have to, to coordinate all the things that should be done. Mm -hmm. And then it is clear, it is not so easy when they say you're recruiting uh, in one year uh, 20 people and we don't know we get when yeah. and who and where and, and so forth. When they are starting up something new and they don't know really, they really don't know the definition and, and the objective, they can't tell us. So, uh, that's difficult. Yeah, that's more difficult. Yes. Who has a, a project in mind? Another project that you're working on? Can you think of a project that's that you're working on or that you're a sponsor of? Or that you're part of? I, I'm out of project at, uh, at this moment, but uh, what uh, my experience is is that getting the scope clear is extremely difficult and even if you when you're describing it you get interpretations and you have somebody some parties that have an, another image of what it should be exactly. you know what it have. Exactly. And, and one of the most the biggest difficulties i've encountered when working on project is when scope changes during the project yes mm. <laughs> so frustrating it is really frustrating. it happens often all the time it happens all the time there are always changes in your project yeah yeah. Well, um, one of the, the, the most important things uh, to do is to close your project before starting your project. When, what do I mean with that? Is that you um, have a clear objective of your project, that you know what the scope is, that you have a budget and a clear timing, uh, and that you have consensus on that before starting the project. And um, I will focus on my six success factors will help you. Um, I will clarify a little bit about uh, closing the project, not, not, not all of it, uh, of course, in two hours. Um, and, 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 and the very um, marking example that I, I got a long time ago was by somebody who was working in a, in a big um, supermarket uh, environment, and one of the biggest uh, in, uh, in Belgium or, or maybe Europe. And he said, oh, after the training of uh, project management, Sandra, had I known this before, um, when uh, he had a project, um, well, like I, like I said, management said, well, wouldn't it be great if you uh, would make uh, an intranet environment before every company had an intranet environment? Eh? Uh, it was hot, a hot topic, it was new. And uh, they said, we, we will be a trending company if we have an intranet. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Uh, let's do that. So the board of directors decided we'll have an internet and they did dedicated somebody from IT to HR to make an internet environment. So this guy was working on it and they said, well, by the end of the year it should be finished. And he worked on it about nine months, uh, not full time. Eh? He combined it with other, with other projects. And every time he encountered um, one of the members of the board, uh, they said, how is your project going? Oh, great. It will be ready by the end of, uh, of the year. 
And so by the end of December, big launch uh, at the board of directors, he presents his internet environment. And uh, so he has a, sh a slideshow and he shows what he had made. He had made a who's who with the, the pictures of all the employees, their names, their phone numbers, their private phone numbers, their private address, <laughs> their birthday, their children, the name of their husbands, <laughs> and their hobbies, everything like Facebook, uh, but uh, uh, for the company. So he didn't, he wasn't aware that he had privacy issues with that. Um, he also put on uh, there the menu, the company, the menu in the company restaurant, also the menus, <coughs> restaurants where the directors would go frequently, uh, company events that they would organize, like a karting event, and um, he had also uh, put nice to knows, for example, that uh, Anne has received, has, has had a, a baby, uh, or um, Jules is getting married, or uh, things like that. Um, and the board of directors was really disappointed, and they said, is this what we have invested so much money and time in? This was not at all what we expected. They had expected um, a, a sort of a platform where people could share their best practices, where they could share policies, where they could share documentation on on, uh, on tools and stuff. So this was, this is a, was a good example of starting in a project that is open um, and not clear about what is expected. Uh, same thing uh, when you are asked to implement, for example, a new HRIS. When will it be ready? What will be, what, what will be in it? And uh, what will it cost us? And you start asking vendors to come by and to, to make proposals, but you don't have a clear scope. And around the year 2000, um, a, um, a university in the US, I can't remember which one, made um, a study on successful and not successful projects. And they saw that uh, with, with, with the year 2000, a lot of IT projects, uh, um, well, because that, that was going to be a huge problem, uh, the, the, the new digits. Um, and they saw that uh, the projects that were most successful, so they, they talked to the project sponsor and to a lot of stakeholders, the ones that were most successful had a, a much smaller scope than the, the ones that were not successful at all. Why? Because in the beginning of the project, they had a lot of discussions on, they had a, lot, a, a long analysis phase. What do we expect? What budget do we have? What are the musts in our project? And what are the nice to haves before starting mm -hmm. up? And they had set the expectations right. And even if the scope was smaller, the stakeholders were more happy with the project because they didn't have any bugs after release. The projects that were not successful, if you think of the IT projects, the most frustrating in IT projects is that you have bugs, that you're testing as a user, that you have bugs in the, in the program and you have the feeling that it has not been tested well enough and the thing doesn't do what you want it to do. So that is, um, you, can be, you can avoid that by doing a good analysis and by closing your project. So the first uh, success factor um, uh, that I have is when you start a project, think of, okay, first of all, is it open or closed? But how can you close it? First of all, by defining the business objective and the project objective. So uh, what's the difference? The business objective answers the question why. It's a strategic target of your project. And the more impact it has on the company's strategy, on the company's uh, also financial results, the more critical your project is. So you have to ask yourself, why should we do this project? What, what will it contribute to? And you have to look further than only HR targets. Look at business objectives. In a, in a, a workshop I did um, in the beginning of the year or before summer, before summer, uh, we focused on um, HR strategy. You can, uh, I made a short movie video on HR strategy. You can find it if you go to the YouTube channel of HR Builders and look back at it, how to make a good HR strategy. And you will see when you do a strategy map, the lower part are your projects and the upper part is, are the financial targets of your company. If you can link your projects to the financial targets of your company, you've answered the question why. Why is this project important? The business objective is, um, is owned by the project sponsor. So the sponsor 
is a person who is responsible for the business objective, who, who thinks it's important enough to do this project, and who will be, uh, um, how do you say that in English, um, who will benefit, who will benefit from the project. So very often a sponsor should be a, a person at, uh, that makes decisions at the highest level. Huh? So it can be the CEO, your project sponsor. It doesn't necessarily have to be the HR director unless he has been dedicated to budget or targets. Um, and then you have the project objective or the project target, and that answers the question, what? What needs to be delivered? And very concrete, concretely, projects, when will it be finished? What will be de delivered? So for example, let's, let's look at um, your private life. Can you, can you give me an example of, uh, of in your private life? Going on a holiday. Going on a holiday. <laughs> Going on a holiday, yeah. Other examples? Buying a new car. Buying a new car, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Building a house. Painting the living room. Painting the living room. Okay, we all have a lot of projects, that's clear. <laughs> Okay, let's take uh, uh, building a house. Why would you build a house? What would be the uh, business objective? To create a family. Yeah. Yeah. And why? How will you benefit from you know, having a home for your family? How will I benefit from it? Yeah. You mean financially? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. It can be anything. Yeah. It can be financial. Yeah. In, in, in investing a proper home, uh, building a helmet to have a. My husband, let's say he's sitting there, and I said, Oh, we would be so much happier, honey, if we're living in a huge house somewhere on a hill in Leuven or so. We will also be so much happier than here on this small office boat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's imagine that. And then we will have space for children. So happiness is my business objective, let's say that. Or assets, huh? building up an asset is your business objective. So or wanting to have children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, building a family, having a family. Yeah? So you can have uh, multiple business objectives. And these are things that are important to me as a project sponsor. But it's not the responsibility of the project manager. Because imagine that you have um, a, a building constructor who builds your dream house. So you went to an architect, he creates the plan, he closes the project. By the way, eh? there's no constructor who's going to start digging a hole before you give, you give him the plan. Eh? It makes sense. But in, in our work environment, it doesn't make sense. We, we just start digging the hole. <laughs> so, as a, um, the, the building constructor, he, he has the plan, he starts building your house, and imagine that there are building constructors that are on target, eh? that they deliver in time, within budget, and with no problems in your house. It's in dream world. Yeah, a dream world. But imagine that it, ha that it exists. Eh? Sorry? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm sorry if there are any building constructors watching this. <laughs> if you have good experience, please share them with Catherine. <laughs> but, um, uh, well, imagine your, your dream house has been built and you move into your dream house and a week later your partner says, I'm sorry, I don't want to live with you anymore. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, your building constructor sends his invoice and you say, I'm not going to pay the invoice because I'm not happy now with my husband. Will he agree not paying your invoice? The invoice? No, of course not. Because it's not his responsibility. So his responsibility is building, constructing the, the house in time, within budget, within the scope. That's the responsibility. The project target is the responsibility of the project manager. And the business ob objective is the responsibility of the sponsor. And if I give a stupid example as building a house, it all makes sense. But when I see, I, I, I do a lot of coaching on project management within companies, and every single time, people get confused where their responsibilities lie. Also the project sponsor. Because the project sponsor will go to the project manager and say, well, now we thought that while you were building the HRIS, 
everybody uh, would be uh, a better salesperson, I don't know. Or you uh, have a huge uh, uh, um, uh, HR program and we don't have more sales. Well, is having more sales my responsibility? If so, I will enlarge the scope. And not only do an HR project, but maybe I want to have uh, uh, impact on marketing and on sales and on maybe logistics. And, uh, so what is my responsibility? Is it building an HRIS? Is it uh, implementing an HR project and making that successful? And if I did a good job but, I, but the company still doesn't reach the business objective, am I being a bad project manager or not? But very often project managers are engaged people and they want to commit themselves to um, being successful, uh, <coughs> having an impact on the business objective, so they mix their responsibilities. Shall we have a look at one of your projects? Can somebody give me an example of a project or that you say, I'm confused. I don't know what my business objective could be or a project objective. Anybody? Or if you think it's too confidential to uh, share with uh, <laughs> online viewers. <laughs> yeah, Martin. In my, in my last assignment, we had uh, the objective to hire 200 additional people, operators, to, um, to, to accommodate the investment project in the machinery that was going to be installed. Now, uh, the business objective was that the investments in the machinery was going to take place and that we had as a project that we had to make sure that the operators that were going to work on the, on the machinery that they would be qualified they would be hired and qualified in order to work on the machinery. Okay. Now we had the, the discussion that we had done with the business people was it yeah but uh, when the investments are delayed what are we going to do? I said no no this is not my problem. That's true. I'm going to hire the people. I'm going to train the people. You have to make sure that the business equipment will be available in time. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that was something that, uh, that, that needed to be put very clearly in advance. Yeah. Who is owning what? Exactly. And of course they are uh, influenced. And there are two uh, different project managers there. But if you part <coughs> on a bigger project, the implementation of uh, of some of a new uh, new way of working uh, in the company. Capacity in order to, uh, to have more products mm -hmm. that should be sold. And that is the ultimate business. Ah, business right, exactly. Okay. So it's part of a bigger project, yeah? and and a bigger project can be split up in different projects. In project management, you, we call this project management, and this program management eh? mm -hmm. uh, over over different projects. And then the business target, like you said, of this project is to sell more and to have a, a bigger revenue. Now, the board of directors has decided we, will need, we need to invest in new tools and train people to use these tools because we are convinced that we sell more. Imagine that everything goes well, you have the tools, people are trained and, and the uh, revenue is not increasing but decreasing. Or sales is not following. Or sales is not happening. Exactly. 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 Sales is not developing as was expected. Yeah. So are you a bad project manager if you foresee the training? Absolutely not. No. No. It's difficult to, yeah. to, to say that. So it's best to make that clear beforehand, to have this discussion with your project sponsor and determine what is my responsibility here. And when will I have done a good job? When you be, will you be happy of uh, me have, doing this job? Yeah? yeah? Very often, the investment is considered as a project, because I believe exactly the same exercise, but in the other way around, they advance the timing. And so, uh, investment that very often, so you have a large project and it's really under an umbrella of a project for the investment, but actually it's the project management manager of the investment that at a certain time, or the operations manager at a certain time, is asking to make sure that you have people on board uh, and trained. And it's not necessarily considered as a separate project. It's more like the project team or the project manager is asking for resources from another department. So then it's difficult to... Exactly. How do you... Exactly. How to manage that? 
Well, uh, saying this, Mark, I thought it was a little bit funny because these are resources of your projects. Money and people are resources of your projects. So very often it is combined and you have sub-projects, sub eh? um, but uh, to make a project successful you have the investment in the tool, you have the investment in people, and people are not always uh, part of the same team. So typically in a project it, it is cross-departmental. Uh, eh? As a project manager, very often you don't even have hierarchical uh, responsibility over anybody, but in your project you do, and sometimes people with a very high uh, responsibility in the company, a, a position uh, plus three, for example, that you have to manage. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not easy being a project manager. And that's why it's very diff uh, important to have a close relationship with your project sponsor and the project sponsor supports you. And the project sponsor is a decision maker and has enough power. So <clears throat> look at people in the board of directors, for example, that can decide over resources. Uh, that have, uh, well, why do we call it a sponsor? a sponsor? Because it's a person putting his wallet on the table. The wallet of the company. <laughs> yeah, I just need to comment because in this example, I think there's also a question of interdependencies because sometimes even your project sponsor will not, on his own, be able to contribute to the overall sales sure. result. So, yeah. at, at one point, I think what's important and, you know, actually what we do in projects was say, this will contribute to 30% of your savings yes. and it will contribute to zero savings if you don't get your, I don't know, governance or I don't know what else yeah. around it. So for us it's kind of always important that whenever you present the project you're making sure that other people are tracking the other ones. Yes, yes. And, but again... And that, you yeah. know, if they fall behind they're always kind of reported in tandem. Yeah, 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 yeah. The program manager here yeah. Should report should know what's going on in the in the other sub projects, yeah. And you need to have a lot of meetings and a lot of a lot of reporting tools to know about that. Uh, but if a project is strategic enough, you should invest in good project management uh, tools, I believe. Um, but still, even if you say this project will contribute to thirty percent more revenue, for example, the thirty percent more revenue is not. Your responsibility, it's not part of the project target. Because if you make it part of the project target, then the scope and the budget is right. Yeah. Any questions on this? How about the interactions with the virtual community, Catherine? Yes, first I have to say hi from Cecile Tukum. <laughs> I think it's really nice that she can view him from Lyon. We have uh, 37 people watching. Okay, great. But if you have any questions, let us know. Okay, my second success factor is that you have to discuss your negotiation space. When I give training in project management, I usually give two days of training. I say that the, if there's only one thing that people take out of the training, it's this. There are three big elements in a project. I already told, uh, talked about that. Outcome, so the result of your project. Resources, so people and budgets. And the time. And they can't all three be as fixed in the beginning, uh, as determined before you even starting the project. So when you, do the, make the, uh, when you uh, prepare your project and you close your project, of course, all these three elements, you will define them, yeah? because your project can't stay open for the rest of your project. Yeah? Your scope can't stay open before the, for the rest of your project. Um, but there's some old school communication going on here, <laughs> by paper. <laughs> um, so, um, you, it can't stay open for the rest of your project, but um, uh, in the beginning, before starting your project, you need to see where is my negotiation space. So, uh, let, me, let us take the example again of uh, building a house. So, imagine that I have uh, a, my negotiation triangle like this. Um, for example, um, the outcome, uh, the result of my project, I want this big house on a hill with a swimming pool and a view and no neighbors. That's my dream house. Yeah? Um, that's the outcome. I have to move. Because by the end of uh, December, 
the tenant of my boat uh, or my apartment is um, uh, moving in, into the apartment and I have to move by the end of December. Uh, so the timing is very strict. And my budget, my resources, I have 200,000 euros. Imagine that with this idea, I go to a real estate broker in Belgium. Um, what will they say? Tell me. It's, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's impossible. What could be another answer? It's going to cost you much more. So the person is going to look at my resources. This Vargo is going to say, your resources need to be flexible. We can have another, another triangle. We could say, okay, well, let's make the outcome flexible. I have limited resources. I have a limited time. So, okay, for, what can I get for 200,000 euros? Maybe I have to move to a completely different country where I can buy a house for 200, with 200,000 euros with these, and a view and a swimming pool, but not in Belgium. I don't, I, I don't know any region in Belgium where you can get that. No? Or, um, well, I can give you an apartment in the center of Brussels, for example. Small apartment then, a very small apartment. No? Studio. <laughs> But you have to change the outcome. Um, or it could be that uh, I'm going to save. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the outcome, I, I really dream of having this huge house. Um, and I have limited resources. So I'm going to wait until I get a heritage. Or I play with the lottery. Or no, no, I work a lot. Um, and uh, and then maybe in 20 years I can buy my dream house. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Now I had a colleague of mine who had been working as a, a creative uh, director, if I may say, um, in um, I hope I can just say that yeah, at uh, the Bel Belgian uh, TV, um, and uh, he said, oh, I know this from. Um, uh, making movies and TV programs, and he showed this. He said that um, at a certain point in time, VTM wanted to uh, to uh, buy Beauty and the Nerd. Don't know if you know uh, the program. Yeah, yeah, Beauty and the Nerd. That was uh, a program that was very very successful in the U.S. And they asked the, the the creators to come to Belgium to discuss them buying this program. And uh, VTM said. We have to have it online. It was like in, uh, in uh, Feb no April or May. We have to have it on uh, TV by September. Mm -hmm. It has to be really cheap. We don't have uh, a lot of money, and it has to be the the most su uh, most su successful program we ever had with the most viewers. It needs to be a huge success. So what did they say? I need everything. Sponsor, sorry, project sponsor with the project manager. <laughs> Where is my flexibility? What are really the most important things? For example, if you have a new legislation that you need to respect, well, the timing is set. And the outcome is set because you need to, to, to be in accordance with this new legislation. Okay, we need extra resources. Let's call HR builders. <laughs> it's, a, it's a way of, um, of building your business case also. And Sandra, in theory, it all makes sense. In reality, it's always like this. It's fixed. What I see people do is being flexible with their resources. They work overtime because your time on your project are, is, is also part of the resources. So you, you just keep working late and in week, during weekends and you shift other projects. You can't, you're not a sorcerer, so... <laughs> You have to be creative, and very often it's in resources, and uh, you go the extra mile. Does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. Any questions or reflections on this? This is a discussion that should be initiated by the. Why do you say that? Now I have to make sure that I have buy-in from my end responder. 
I love your body language when you're seeing that. I don't know if you notice it. I'm fun with it. You too. Yeah, 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 I noticed that. It's not everybody likes it. Not everybody likes that game. Yeah? I mean, I think you can be a good project manager if you like that to challenge. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If it's becoming yeah. a burden, then you yeah, yeah, yeah. will not go against someone. No, no, it's true. You, you see, it's like a game. Very often, I give training to project managers. They don't. They, they, they think that okay. In theory, if you read the books, the project sponsor needs to prepare all this, the business objective and the project objective and all this. What I'm saying. But in reality, you look at me, uh, people writing the books are not the ones made doing the project. Uh, in, uh, in reality, it's like you said, the project manager needs to address this with the project uh, director. And this is where the fun starts. It's the negotiation. It's your negotiation triangle. And you need to be very, very assertive as a project manager because you're discussing your project with a sponsor. And a sponsor is somebody who has this power of decision, so he yeah. yeah. doesn't get on, uh, uh, there by being nice, nice. all the time. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's a business person. Um, so, especially if they're used to get to receive objectives, and this yeah. is they were sleeping your objective. Exactly. Because you want to be successful as a project manager. And your pro a good project sponsor wants you to be successful too. So you need to make sure that you have these discussions beforehand and good, uh, thorough discussions on what is expected so that your project sponsor can give you all the trust that is needed to uh, do the project. And he will, a project sponsor will give more trust to somebody who's giving a little bit of a challenge there and negotiating than somebody who will say, tell me what I need to do. How do you feel about it? Well, um, the reasons I'm such a, such a fan of the Agile uh, project management is because you, you are coming back all the time to your sponsor, to your clients, but also to your sponsor. And most of the time, there the thing that is changing is the outcome or the scope. The scope is constantly changing. Uh, there you, you are prepared for scope changes, so you don't want to leave them, but you, you keep them. Yes. And not all the time you have to make a choice of one of the scope items. You have to go back to the sponsor, and he has always had to say what's most, most important, what delivers most value to the business. So he's responsible to create as much value as possible with the money you have and the time you have. That's one of the, the key factors of agile. Wow, great! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, it's uh, like you said in a, during a project, um, it always changes. Eh? You have changes in your scope, changes in your budget, changes in your timing, and people who start with a project very often think, "Now I have my plan, and it's uh, it will be uh, be a piece of cake." No, 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 no. Never, ever. I have never seen a project that is uh, exactly as planned, as so going on exactly as planned. So um, I, I love the, the the view that you don't have to prepare too much, but just go with by little steps. Yeah. Great. When I was in a project that took a very long time, it was about two years and there was nothing, everyone was, was, was not happy with the project, and then we changed it, we decided to, to make it, uh, to deliver more often, to show much more things to the business more often, and then we changed it and in a half of a year, the project was there and everyone was happy, so yeah, it can be, but it's totally different, than, uh, yeah. your responsibility as project leader is much higher, but on the other hand, the sponsor has to give you much more mandate, so yes. you don't have to go back all the time to do the whole five people to can go to your sponsor. Great. So close to you. And you make a difference between the sponsor and your clients. Can you clarify that? Well, the clients are also the users, the users of the project, the okay. people who, who, who will have to give the training on okay. the new uh, operating machine or on the new IT project or something like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. So we have the sponsor, that's one of the, of the, of the stakeholders, but we also have the, the end users. And the end users. The, the people who are influenced by your project, yeah. you call the clients. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Any other insights or questions? Okay. I have one question. Can I have a bottle of water, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Number three. Um, the
that you have to remain realistic in defining the scope, but you've already uh, um, uh, said that. Eh? Now, <clears throat> very important. Thank you, Isabel. I'm sorry, I have to uh, drink a little bit. Very important discussion to have with your between the project sponsor and the project manager is what are the musts in my project. Yeah. And uh, what I like to do is um, determine the musts, the nice to haves, and the, and the if possible. So three categories. So must you really need to deliver this? And when you define your scope, you will put in the must the things that you're going to plan. All the rest you're not going to plan. The nice to haves are okay. If in during our project I have some extra budget or <coughs> extra time, I will plan things of my nice to have. And if possible, well, it's the last priority. It uh, can be very interesting to have this uh, um, discussion because when during your project your tr uh, the discussion triangle changes, you can review your project and review the priorities in your project. And we shouldn't forget the out of scope. Have clear discussions on what is not your responsibility. And some people say, well, yeah, Sandra, it's like opening your umbrella, like we say here, uh, and not taking on responsibilities. I say it's the contrary. It's by stating what are not your responsibilities that you take on your responsibility for the musts and that you set clear expectations. Now you should all say yes. <laughs> but it's, 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 you know, it's, it's very much because if you, I, I was just going to comment about opening the umbrella. I don't think it's a question of protecting yourself as a project manager. I think it's about helping your client prioritize. Because most of the time what you see is they'd like to have everything. And it's, it's like children, you know, oh, this is nice and that's nice. And, and you really need to, and, and this is the comment that I would have had also with the previous discussion with the sponsor, you need to help them be successful. Yeah. So you need to limit them to a few, few things that they can really succeed in. So that's why, to me, you have that discussion on this. So yeah. 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 One thing well this year, and which is big, and exactly. then you will be recognized by everyone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, exactly. I agree. And um, you are there to say, okay, if you want all of this, for example, you want a huge house with a swimming pool and a jacuzzi and five bedrooms and three bathrooms and whatever, um, okay, it will cost you that much. Oh, and then when you have a discussion about the budget, then all of a sudden it's called change. Uh, but that's okay, um, because when, when preparing the project, you review, you review, you review scope, uh, timing and, and budget uh, anyway. Yeah? But um, it's nice to have this discussion because sometimes your project sponsor would like you to, to, to um, uh, have a huge outcome of your project um, and then you can say okay if there is some time left if we have extra budget I will consider this or we will rediscuss this <laughs> we will rediscuss this we haven't forgotten about it but it's not the biggest priority if we really have to choose what do we need to deliver first any ideas on that no <laughs> I have some experiences more and more, the entire registration. So uh, we are calling you to, enter, to make an implementation about time registration, uh, normally in collaboration with ICT. And then you have to prepare everything, you have to present, uh, because uh, you need some clients who will work with it. It's not all, always HR. Sometimes it are the managers or of some departments who have to follow up some registrations and then they are taking further and then they say oh now we are doing a project for HR but what's in for us? Mm -hmm. yeah. So your clients have another purpose yeah. than HR has exactly. and that can be a discussion uh, then they are looking the advantages for themselves yeah. and they don't see immediately their advantages because they are thinking otherwise they are saying if for example um, this can be connected to our production uh, production sheet the planning yeah. Yeah. The planning tools oh 
then we see some advantages for us, but then you talk about another another project mm -hmm. and uh, it's blocked. Yes. And then our sponsor is blocked also. Yes. <laughs> well, I have had um, the, the luck uh, to work um, on a long project in a Japanese company. <laughs> and, um, and in the beginning, um, I, uh, I had really difficulties with, uh, I, I thought they were slow in their decision making process. It took a lot of time, the consensus culture. And uh, we hear, ah, in Belgium, oh, come on, we, we go on with it. But they wait until they get consensus. They have meetings and meetings over and over again until there is a consensus. And then they start and they fire away and uh, with a, a high speed. Um, so, and I, I have learned there that it's really best to wait until there's a consensus before starting a project because otherwise you're always busy uh, with your change management uh, project and it costs you a lot, a lot of more time. People leave the company because they don't agree uh, and you have a huge um, mess after, afterwards. And I've done some time and registration projects and all the time. We, I, we thought, okay, it's going to be, to, we're going to implement time and registration mm -hmm. tool, that's yes, it. Yes. No, 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 no. Put in your scope. Huh? And sometimes the scope needs to be enlarged with new communication and, with, and sensibilization of the, of the of stakeholders. In your handouts, I have put all the steps for preparing yes. a project. Of course, uh, we won't address this, but um, uh, all of that. But risk analysis is also in there. Catherine, there's a question yes. from we the have a question. Australia. Oh. Oh. <laughs> does, does anybody use project management software to help? Um, and she herself uses uh, Microsoft Projects, mm -hmm. but not so much experience with. So, this is a question for everybody. Mm -hmm. what, what are your experiences? Good software to support project management? Mm -hmm. My experience is that when you use tools, the best tool there is is a white wall, uh, a white screen, um, yeah. or, or, yeah, or, yeah. or a white sheet of paper, or a white board, or something yeah. like that, because it's just do it that way. <laughs> yes, the cheapest thing is it works best. Yeah. When you, I, I, like many times I've seen that with clients, they are trying to use a tool and then they start with a tool, but the tool doesn't doesn't fix the problems they are. Mm -hmm. So when you start manually and afterwards you take a tool, it's much better because you then, then you know what the problems are because the tool won't console them. To work with it. So, I think it's kind of an interesting discussion specifically for HR projects, to be honest with you, because I think there are so many, it's, it's one of the things that I really struggle with, actually. Mm -hmm. um, because what I see is, especially with HR transformation in the past umpteen years, right, um, there are a lot of things that tend to come together and there is no real tool that will help you manage all that. It's a little bit what you say then, yeah. just scrap it all and do a piece of paper. And I think specifically for HR, this is important. I think. And, and there is sometimes a danger that we try to adopt the tools that are used mostly by engineers, IT, and so on. But and even in IT, yeah. the manual one works best. Oh, okay. so that, that I don't have experience with, I have to say. <laughs> My IT people were always very happy with the tools. But, but I have to say, I really struggle with it. And at a certain point, you get the feeling that managing the tool is becoming such a large yeah, task. Exactly. And it takes yeah. too much resources. Yeah. The time to manage the tool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no. sorry about this. Uh, uh, <laughs> champagne. <laughs> um, my experience is uh, well, I have uh, helped uh, several companies implement project management. Um, that I agree that when they implement uh, project management at first, they shouldn't invest in tools uh, right away, but first get acquainted with project management, the project, project management methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're a company that is really working on a project based, I think you need to invest in tools. And uh, I can't keep track of all the project tools there are. There are so many uh, tools that you can um, um, use as software as a service. You can, you can uh, have free uh, shareware and uh, download. You can, for uh, making your Gantt charts, for example, you have free software. Um, so, 
MS Project is, is, is good, I believe, for um, making your project planning. Yeah, so the time planning um, and uh, allocating your resources. Uh, it can also interact if you have Microsoft uh, Office. It can interact with your Outlook. You can uh, set tasks for your project team. Um, so for managing your one project, uh, it can be a, a very performing tool. I really, I really like, love working with them as project. And Microsoft has tools that can combine um, several projects so you can have a dashboard. And very often when a company invests in project management tools, it is because the uh, management team, for example, all these sponsors need to have a clear overview of all the projects going on in their company. Um, because very often in projects, it's always the same resources that are all allocated to projects. And when you get a clear view on all these projects, you see that they're booked for 150%. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why the, they, uh, some projects never get to the results. So you have, if you have a good, if you have a need for a good reporting on resources and overall view of uh, of all your projects, you need to invest in tools. I only have experience with project with uh, with Microsoft tools. You have a very performant uh, Microsoft tools where you have uh, a portfolio server and uh, uh, that, that where you can have clear dashboards on. Uh, on all the projects with the with, uh, uh, traffic lights and colors and uh, all these uh, gadgets and features. And what is um, useful too is that everybody reports in the same way. Because if you have to, if several project managers need to report to the project sponsor and everybody has his own, their, their own tools, then sometimes it's difficult for the project manager to to get to know, uh, uh, to see, to keep track of the project. Some people go really into detail, others uh, have a very high level view. So when starting with project management, you need to have your own uh, set of, um, of, uh, of, of, of a user, gu a user guide, how much detail we want. My advice is don't give uh, the steering committee too much detail because the more detail you give, the more in detail they will look at your project and, and have their opinion <laughs> on that. Um, but that's my idea. Um, but there are free tools, but I don't have uh, any experience with that. I don't know if there are any other people following online that have experiences. They can let uh, Katrin know. Yes, I, I received uh, Trello. Is that something yeah, that's Trello, the, the okay. something you use on in the Agile? Okay. But that, that was something I wanted to say. It depends a lot on which kind of methodology you are using. Yes. If you are using Prince 2 or waterfall projects, then MS Project is, is okay, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but when you are trying to work Agile, it's, it doesn't work MS Project. And then you can use, for example, Trello or Storyboarding or then you have different tools. But, uh, then sometimes it's, it isn't easy anymore to make the overall view for management. And sometimes they, they make the combination of the two, only to bring the overview, the, the high level plan to management in this project, and then the, the management in the project itself, in the team they use, for example, travel. Yes. Okay. What they have for seeing in my company. Okay. Okay, thanks. For your question, Australia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was a male person, by the way. My mistake. I said she. Ah, okay. It? okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we can't see any faces. Ah, no, 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 true. Yeah. And, and yeah. True. But it's morning in Australia now, I think. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I have an example of how you could define your scope uh, in a diagram. Right? Um, number four, respect the rules in your uh, project. Like I said, uh, you need trust from your project sponsor, and your project, the project sponsor needs to be able to give his or her trust to the project manager. And uh, like I said too, if you give too much detail to the steering committee, uh, then you have detailed discussions in your steering committee meetings, um, and not overview discussions. So, um, the steering committee the, uh, is the board where you report on your project, and these are the people who are able to decide on any changes in your projects, uh, who will give uh, their go for the budget, who will give their go for the outcome and um, mm -hmm. for the um, a time uh, timing. And if there are any changes, you need to go back to the steering committee 
um, or your sponsor according to the impact of the change to um, have their goal to go further with your with your project your steering committee that these are people who have the decision power over your project and over the resources mainly so imagine building a house who would be the steering who would you put in the steering committee Yes, me yeah. because we have the budget, <laughs> and they're building the house for us. And one of us is going to be the sponsor, and the person communicating with the project manager. The project manager is part of the steering committee. According to some methodologies, the project manager is not part of the steering committee. I don't agree, because you need to be able to report first hand. Yeah. That's my opinion. Who could be part of the steering committee when building the house? The architect? Yes, that's the, going to be the project manager, probably. Or the architect is the project manager. Yeah. Who else? How about my father-in-law? He knows a lot about uh, building houses. It's not the case, but imagine he knows a lot about building houses. I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> He's probably not watching, but in case he is. I don't think he knows a lot about, about building houses, but imagine that I have a father-in-law um, and I'm not dreaming of the house, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I already have a kid, so... Um, um, imagine that my father-in-law has, has a strong opinion on what's needed uh, to build a, a good house, and, and he knows a lot about it. Shall I put him in the steering committee or not? Isabel? No? Why not? Uh, no decision. No decision. You all think it's logical that my father-in-law would not be part of the steering committee unless he has the money. <laughs> if he's part of my resources, ah, and I'm being creative, I'm going back for like I went to the real estate agency. They said not with 200,000 euros, and I go back home and I'm in tears, and my father-in-law says, oh, I give you half a million. <laughs> then I think he needs to be part of the steering committee. <laughs> but if he doesn't give me half a million, a million or not even 50,000 euros, he's not going to be part of the steering committee. It makes sense. Look at your own projects. Haven't you ever had a steering committee where there was somebody who didn't have any power over your project? Part of the steering committee? I have. Several times. Responsibility to make these decisions all the time. Only in accepting in very special occasions there is there is a steering committee. Or when yeah, you really need much more budget or something like that, and then you have to go there in very uh, limited situations, but not like in a normal world for projects. Great example, and eh? people who are able um, to uh, to decide. And as you, as you say, the sponsor needs to have um, certain responsibility, and you don't have to go for everything to the steering committee because then it makes it too uh, too heavy. Um, and then you have your project team members. Um, they also have responsibilities. Uh, your project team members they need to be able to defend the importance of your projects. To their uh, uh, to their superiors, because they have their business as usual, and then their, your project that they're working on. So when their um, their superior says no 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 just uh, there's no time for that project you need to work uh, on this they need to defend the importance and and uh, always report to the uh, project manager if there are any issues right away. So a project manager shouldn't um, go to the steering committee or the sponsor say and say. I haven't been able to not collaborate. But uh, then your head will move. <laughs> and then I agree. <laughs> okay. So you see that sponsor and the project manager, they are so crucial to the project and even in Agile, even more uh, than um, in Prince 2, for example. Uh, it's more stressed uh, upon. I, I really like it. I'm going to uh, <laughs> analyze the agile. <laughs> okay. 
Now, um, I have a, a video I wanted to uh, share with you, but I forgot to load it, so I will, I will um, click on it. I hope you won't be shocked, but just a, a small intermezzo um, to, um, to explain, uh, to show that the sponsor needs to give um, the project manager the opportunity to find solutions, creative solutions by themselves. I hope it will work. Oh, ah, I need the mouse. <laughs> Sorry. And I don't know if you can be able to watch it online. Nothing happens. <laughs> oh, it's on. We have to switch. Let's start the procedure here. I haven't done it in Ja, het is drie keer. Oké, okay, we will start de uh, video again. Maybe you can do a full screen. Maybe Brody can do a full screen. Oké, okay, I'm sorry. And maybe the noise, the sound. <laughs> It's not my computer, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, technology. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. Again, wait just a minute. Oh, technology is not working with us here. Okay, I will. Uh, the sound is. I will uh, play it back. Eh? I'm sorry about this. Okay. get back to the presentation just a short interval so that um, even if things don't um, happen as you wish it would happen as a project sponsor you shouldn't mingle up too much about the how and the what is important the how is the responsibility of the project manager so okay they come to a result maybe it's not very efficient but <laughs> they get to a result and they learn from it okay <clears throat> in my timings and in my budgets, uh, um, uh, in my resources. Huh? Um, and like we did with the scope, uh, the nice to have, uh, uh, we also have uh, some extra margins. And uh, it depends on the, uh, the, uh, the budgets, if it's a huge one or a small one, uh, what percentage it should be. Huh? There are different, uh, di different views on that if you have to do it to have 5% margin or 25 even, but it depends on the type of the project, <clears throat> I believe. But do foresee some extra margins and uh, especially, um, first of all, you as a sponsor, uh, you need to get some more, a lot more mandates and with Agile apparently that's, uh, that's already the case, um, so I'm happy to hear that. Um, you need to have to um, be able to keep a budget 
uh, um, and, and determine what's going to happen with the budget without always having to go to the steering committee. But also the project manager should be able to have a petty cash uh, uh, for, for small uh, expenses. For example, when you have team meetings, um, what, what you, uh, people really love is when they're working in a project that they feel part of a team. Even, even if these are people from other, from other departments working together. Well, um, I tend to take breakfast, for example, for them and have morning meetings. Or to bring a cake to do something special. Or, special. or in some, uh, some companies you, only get, uh, you, you don't get cookies when you, uh, when you have a coffee, then I bring some cookies or chocolate. Something, something nice. Or when we have um, had a success, we have uh, reached a, a certain milestone, then we go celebrate. Uh, we go and, and, and uh, grab a, a pint, for example, uh, together. Or maybe go karting or uh, do something with the project team. And uh, it's nice that you don't have to buy it, uh, pay it from uh, yourself. In the beginning when I did projects, I did that for my own moments, but if you have a lot of projects to manage. <laughs> it's, no, you don't like that. So um, I tend to ask for a small party budget, um, just to invest in, uh, in a team. <coughs> I don't know if you do that, uh, ask for some extra budgets, yeah? Yeah, always to pick on some margin. Yeah. Sometimes they, they see the margin themselves and say, no, 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 a contingency budget, but also plan some extra yeah, mm -hmm. extra budgets for just some uh, extra pocket money for the for the project uh, manager. But we 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 would not call it party money. Yeah? <laughs> 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 incentive. incentive. Oh, I like that one. Incentive budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good one, not a party budget. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. <clears throat> and then the, the last uh, success factor is um, our new releases. You are the one um, doing uh, the import. Yeah, you, you recognize that. And nobody takes it over. It becomes business as usual. It's not a project anymore. Uh, so you need to really close it and look, look at it with the steering committee and decide Am I the best person to, uh, in, to, to be the one who is going to support, uh, for example, this tool, uh, or going to be the contact person for, I don't know, the welcome pack, uh, whatever it can be that you're uh, responsible for in HR? Um, or would it be best that it's, uh, that it's part of the job for somebody else? And very often it's, it's not even celebrated when the result of the project is done. It's normal. We don't have time. No, 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 no. We've spent so many steering committees on this project. It's finished. Now we're not going to have another meeting again. You need to celebrate the result, the end of the project, like you celebrate when you move into your new house. Eh? And, be, and, and to have a look back at the project. What have you do, done well? What went well? And are there any learning points? Um, and feedback. I really like to get feedback uh, from uh, the steering committee, from your project ma uh, team members, from other stakeholders, on how they have experienced the project and if you did a good job. And a lot of project managers are afraid to ask that because being a project manager is not always a, a fun job. Eh? You, you have to play the game. Eh? <laughs> uh, you sometimes, uh, with the stakeholders, some people get, give uh, a lot of resistance to your project and it doesn't always go as planned and uh, you're not always liked uh, by everybody because you're implementing something new and 
they were not waiting for you, and uh, it can be, sometimes it can be fun, but not always. Mm -hmm. um, and then you think, oh my god, there were so many things that went wrong in my project, I'm not going to get a good uh, feedback. And very often you do. And, and, and it's uh, very interesting uh, to, to see what, they, what people appreciated uh, about your approach, and also what you could learn from it. But then ask the question, and what next? Because as a project manager, you very often see other opportunities. Huh? Your project is finished, but other stuff should be done. Your time and registration is finished, but I, we see we should maybe revise our time schedules, for example. Uh, it could be a new project, but are you the one who's doing that? You could, maybe it's somebody else who's going to do the project. So really take the time to, uh, to close and to ask, okay, who's going to take over? I saw you uh, not. Do you have uh, experience with not closing projects? Or? Yes, sure. Um, <laughs> in one of the last companies where I was, I saw them try to implement three times in a row an ERP packet uh -huh. without closing the previous try tryouts, mm -hmm. having no closure and uh, starting on by starting with the same mistakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it ended up because I'm not there anymore, but they uh, only installed the steering committee and then they had a group of key users, they had no project team, they had a project manager who had nothing of all these responsibilities. So, um, no, I think it's very important. Step six is closing mm -hmm. and learning for the next project. Yes, it's very important. Yes. Mm -hmm. It all costs too much money to make the same mistakes again and again. True. And when you say it costs money, very often the biggest budget in a project are the resources. And when you make your project budget, you need to calculate the cost of people working in your project. Huh? Number of days um, uh, multiplied by the cost. And we're in HR, so it's easy for us to, <laughs> to uh, get to the cost of, uh, of, uh, of employees. And when they see how much it has cost labor, Time, how much labor time it has costed in this project, then sometimes they, uh, they're they aware of <laughs> the yeah, fact that it's important <laughs> to learn from mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other insights? Yeah, I, I, I was just, I can only echo the thoughts, but uh, indeed in my current project, I'm finding it's dragging on much longer than you know, probably two years, two, for example. And I am, two of the things that I'm doing, one is I told them that I will not work on it more than three days a week because then I had to force them to take over some of the activities which are now ready to be taken over, to uh -huh. be over. And I've also asked to, uh, them to identify people who will formally take over the activity yeah. from me once the respective area is, let's say, complete. So I'm kind of phasing out over four six months. Oh, yeah. The budget for the project and so the mandates uh, that are needed in your in your project. Um, calculate all of that and then add on to that time needed just for project management. Standing on your chair and overviewing your project, motivating people and in my experience you need to add about 20%, 25% to for example, I have another meeting for my operational stuff. I, I uh, uh, drag the, the, the project management blocking my agenda to another, uh, to another moment in time. Because otherwise, probably, you're working evenings and weekends. Yeah, that's, that's sometimes you uh, uh, don't have a choice, and sometimes you're reaching the deadline. Yeah. You also have yeah, needed too. time, you, you can yeah. work in weekends, but your colleagues, you, you, you have to communicate when you aren't there. So yes. you need time when the other people are the clients on them. So it isn't the case. To be the uh, implementators, for, uh, for example, for uh, HRIS uh, 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 systems, they, uh, good ones, <laughs> they add like 20%, 25% onto their, um, uh, their budget just for projects, so you have to pay them for project management. But these are the good ones, because they, they will be able to monitor the project. There is a suggestion. First of all, we have 79 viewers, wow. so that's wow. people who are indeed enjoying the interaction we have here, what we learn. And one suggestion 
is a company for a project management tool. We were talking about tools, and it's Be Innovative. And they have, it's, it's like, um, I think, yeah, it's a software, you can have it on Android, or and Be Innovative is the name of the company. So I wanted to share that. And then I also received a comment via email on, um, when we were talking in the beginning on the differences between the sponsor and the project manager, the differences in responsibility sometimes, um, she thought like, okay, maybe it's a little bit too simple as we talked about it. Um, if the sponsor doesn't have his business objectives clear, not for the business nor for the project members, then a project management can be impossible. But I think that's what we said or what we agree on. I fully agree. That yeah. was the first slide, yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so in her opinion, the project manager should uh, indeed help, and I think we said that too, uh, help to define the business objectives and to coach maybe also to sponsor it, if that's possible. We need to challenge each other. Yeah. But I fully agree that without having uh, the business objective and the project objective clear, don't start your project. Even if your sponsor says, yeah, but I really need it and it's urgent, don't start the project. Don't do it, because you're not going to be successful, you're going to be very visible in the organization, and everybody's going to see you. And you're going to be pissed off. Yes. So you're a, yes. You will be considered a failure. Yes. So you're not doing yourself even a thing. No. And not the business. So you're losing twice. True. Don't do it. If that is not clear from the beginning, leave it out. Say, yes. I have to do other things. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Any other comments or questions? Well then, I would like to thank you for participating. For the ones who are here present <laughs> on the boat, it's bubble time. It's yes. bubble time. <laughs> That's the advantage of coming to the boat um, and uh, and joining us for the workshop. So I hope you will stay. For everybody who joined us uh, through um, the streaming, thank you for being our guinea pigs because it was the first time that we did the, the streaming. I hope uh, we can welcome you uh, on the office boat or any other location that we do workshops. And uh, if it has been a success, um, we will, of course, repeat uh, this initiative and do some more uh, live streaming. So we will evaluate it and uh, let you know about it. Maybe you can crack a bottle by yourself, uh, wherever you are. Uh, even in Australia, you have uh, maybe breakfast with bubbles. <laughs> so um, thank you for watching and uh, bye from Ghent. Bye. 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 Bye.